Hi everyone, welcome back to another Basic Grey video. Today I'm back to share another card creation with you, showcasing a bit of a seasonal theme with you. And seeing as Christmas is um, upon us, I thought that'd be fun to showcase not only a new line, but also an older line from Basic Grey. So I'll be using the Asper Frost collection as you can see here. This is the 12 by 12 pattern paper. I'll also be using this Aspen Mary stamp set along with Nordic Holidays stamp set and I'll be using some fun stamps from this to create a bit of a technique. So I'm just going to move this pattern paper and stamps to one side and just to start out I've already trimmed down a standard size card measuring four and a quarter by five and a half and this is just trimmed down from some white cardstock. I've also trimmed down this pattern paper from the Aspen Frost collection and I'm just going to adhere this with some dry adhesive to the front of the card. It is slightly larger than the card um, but I wanted to make sure that it fit perfectly over the front to cover the entire um, front. So adhering this down and I'm just going to trim off the excess with some scissors. So here comes the fun part. I'll be creating a little bit of a window feature in this card and I'll be cutting out a section of the card to um, replace that with some acetate that I'll be stamping on. So I'm just measuring down and I'll be measuring down one and a half inches from the top of the card and making a trim line. And then I'll be putting the card back together as you'll see here in a moment. So just placing the card back together and moving it along, I'll be also trimming down in between, measuring another one and a half inches and making another cut line to create two pieces. So I'll be discarding the center piece and as you can see here, this is what it'll look like and I'll replace that with some acetate that I'm going to be stamping on now. So taking the Nordic Holiday stamp and I'll be using a really fun stamp out of that. I'll also be stamping with some stays on ink and I'm just going to apply the stamp to the block. Now with the stays on white ink you always have to, every time you go to use it, you have to re-ink it. It comes with a little film that actually stops the ink pad from drying out. So I'm just going to take the ink and apply that to the pad and rub that in. When you purchase this it comes with the actual ink. This stays on white, gives a really crisp look on um, when you stamp on acetate as well. So I've just added a bit of black cardstock underneath so you can see the stamping. And I'm just going to go along the entire shed of this um, acetate and apply the stamping. Be careful when you actually are stamping onto acetate because it is a slippery surface and if you slightly move the stamp it will um, smudge out your stamping. So finishing off with the last bit of the stamping here. Okay, so I'm just going to move that black cardstock so you can have a closer look at the acetate and it's really, really pretty effect. So I'm going to set that aside and work on the next bit of technique work and I'll be taking the point setter from the Nordic Holidays stamp set. I've already applied it to my um, Fiskars stamp press and I'm going to apply a dusting of powder here onto watercolour paper and I'm going to ink up my stamp with some Versamark ink. And because this watercolour paper actually has a really heavy tooth to it, I'm going to be putting a lot of pressure down onto that stamp to make sure I get a really good impression. Once that's done, I'm just going to apply a dusting of white embossing powder and then heat set with my embossing tool. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to switch the um, pattern paper, oh, not the pattern paper, sorry, the watercolour paper around and at the other end of that paper I will be um, stamping out some leaves, once again using some Versamark ink and also some white embossing powder.
Once they're heat embossed, I'm going to be using some distress stains and I'll be using some shabby shutters, peel paint, aged mahogany, barn door and some picket fence to colour in my stamped images. So starting out with some barn door, I'm just going to zoom in here so you can have a look. Whenever you're working with these distress stains, don't be afraid to mix the colours. They do not become contaminated. And also when you're using the picket fence one, um, you will find that the colour will saturate onto the top of the nib. All you need to do to clear that is to grab a piece of cardstock um, or, you know, photocopy paper and rub the top of that. That will actually clear it to make it go back to the white. So I've just applied the colours here and I'm just making sure that I don't over apply because when you do the, the image can become very muddy looking so you need to be careful to make sure that if you want to apply another layer definitely go and heat set first. And I'm pretty happy with how this looks right now so I'm just going to take my heat embossing tool and just set that ink straight into the watercolour paper. And once that's done, here is another closer look at it. I'm going to flip the paper around and work on the leaves. So I'll be using some shabby shutters and peel paint and picket fence on this one. You see me move off to the side there. I'm actually pressing the top of it. It has a release valve in the top. So I'm just making sure that there's some ink down onto the nib. And this is a really fast and fun technique to work with too. Distress stains, you can cover an image really quickly. If you're in a rush as well, it's a great ink to use. Okay, so the leaves are pretty much done and I'm just going to heat set those. And once those are done, I'm just going to trim out. And as you can see, they're all trimmed out. So I'm going to work on putting the card together. So starting out with the acetate, I'm just going to adhere some dry adhesive to the top part of this card and lay down the acetate on it. And I'm just going to use my grid mat here to line it up. And as you can see, it's actually got a lot of overhang. Um, I purposely did this to make sure that I had enough um, going across the card. So, But that's fine, I can trim that off, which you'll see here in a moment. So once again, just adhering the bottom part and lining up the bottom and sticking down the acetate. So there we go, it gives a great fun window and a really great effect to a card. So now I'm going to work on the poinsettia and I'm just going to add some foam dimensionals top and bottom of that flower just so that it doesn't hit the acetate and make sure it doesn't you can't view it from the inside and don't worry about the inside I'll show you later I'm going to actually adhere some more cardstock to cover up the adhesive that we've applied already and I noticed that I really needed an extra leaf here so you don't see this in the video but I did go back and actually create another leaf because it needed to balance out a little bit further. I needed one at the bottom. So I'm just going to adhere that last um, leaf to underneath the point setter. And there we go, turning out really pretty. So I'm going to be taking the Aspen Merry stamp set and I'll be using the Happy Holidays sentiment from that stamp set. And I'm going to apply some VersaFine ink, Onyx Black ink. Everyone asks me what sort of ink I use because I get a really crisp impression with my sentiments. Well, the Onyx Black ink is the best that I've found so far to be really vivid when you're actually stamping. It gives a very good impression. So I'm just lining that up and stamping the sentiment down. Okay, so I just want to add some rhinestones just to jazz up that flower a little bit and make it a little bit more Christmassy and kind of blingy. And there we have it, really fun. So to finish out the card, I've trimmed down some white cardstock just to place inside and cover up those adhesive lines. And this just really finishes off the card, it gives a great look. 
as I said, this is a really fun card full of techniques and um, it's kind of like a bit of a busy card but at the end of the day, if you're really wanting to send something special to a really um, close person in your life, um, I think this would be a really special card at Christmas time. Hope you've had fun viewing the video today and have picked up some tips along the way. For more information, please visit Basic Grey and thanks for watching.